All right, for the materials, we got some Danville flat wax nylon in red. I'm using some red so it's a little bit more visible. We got some Mustad C70 SD big game hooks, some Chinese saddle hackle in white, but you can use whatever saddle hackle you like. Pearl flashaboo, some white mare boo, and some white deer hair belly. So the whole idea is we're gonna be spinning deer hair. You can stack deer hair or you can spin it. Stacking is used to get a tighter body. You can get different colors in there. Spinning, we're gonna tie a big section. We're gonna let it spin around the hook naturally as the thread grips around it. It's gonna flare open. For tying flies, we like to get a good amount of thread wrapped on the hook so that way all the material has something to grab onto, bite onto when we tighten that thread, right? We're gonna take some feathers here and tie these off the back first thing. So let's grab some white saddle hackle. I'm just gonna grab whatever I got here. Some of these are kind of chewed up a little bit. And you use about four to six saddle hackle. I mean, you know, depending on what sort of bait fish you're trying to imitate, you can make it bushy and thick. You can make it thin and sparse. It's all up to you, right? If you want to make it bigger and kind of, you know, more, let's say, like a mullet imitation, use some thicker uh, feathers, right? If you're going for a sand eel, you're going to want to use some thinner feathers. So anyways, we're going to get some white saddle hackle, and we're going to start tying our saddle hackle in. We'll go with four pieces of white saddle hackle here. And I don't want to tie the stem too far back because we're going to need some room for when we spin that deer hair. You can also tent hackle if you like. Actually, we'll go with six feathers here. Let's, let's go ahead and tent some hackle. We're actually going to take some hackle and slowly tie it, almost like a clock, all the way around the hook shanks. Kind of the beauty of the snake flies having these, all this lawn seductive kind of uh, hackle off the back and those striped bass just see that that marabou and that saddle hackle in the wash if you're fishing in the surf and yeah this is really about the only fly I, I fish in the surf late in November or December when the albies and all the stripers up on the north shore are gone saddle hackle and I try to tie them kind of all around instead of just on their sides you know so you kind of get a little bit more of a body profile so we got our feathers here. So we're gonna take some flash. I'm just gonna be using some regular pearl flashaboo here. We'll do like five, six, up to 10 strands, however you like it. If you want it flashy, make it flashy. If you're making the fly sparser, like a sand eel, use a little bit of less flash, you know? If you're fishing like on the flats or something. There's a couple different things you can do. If you want, you can palmer marabou on there. Or you could just take some marabou and tie it in. Now, there's a couple different ways you could do that, right? You could either strip the marabou off the quill, or you could also just go ahead and tie it in. So I like to rip the kind of end off of it, and then I just tie it in. So you don't have this, uh, this little end of the marabou piece right there that kind of gets in the way of the hook sometimes. Grab this and tie this off the top. You can also palmer it where you wrap it around, right? It's all up to you, however you like to do it. When I tie these for myself, I like to time pretty quick. I'll usually tie them out before I head out to fish for the sunset in the surf or something, right? Okay, so let's take some deer hair here. Now for when we're spinning the deer hair, we're gonna get a big clump of deer hair. The whole idea behind it is you're gonna take this deer hair, decent amount too. What you're gonna do is you're gonna grab it and you're gonna tie and wrap that thread with a couple light wraps, just one or two, right in the middle. And the whole idea is when you wrap that around, it should spin around the hook shank. Now, this hair isn't the stiffest stuff, so it didn't wrap all the way around, but that's all right. Sometimes it doesn't cooperate as well, so we'll take some thread and, I mean, some hair and fill that in right there. But again, keeping it right in the middle of the hair. Now, you want to put a lot of pressure, but you're going to have to be careful. I may even break the thread while doing this. You're going to have to find a nice medium, but between thread pressure and not um, putting too much to where it breaks, right? So from here, now you need to be careful. You don't want to poke yourself in the finger here, but we got to push the hair. I like to compact it. They make tools for it. I use my fingers. It's just how I'm used to it. But we'll take this and we're just going to wrap this down like so. So that hair's secure. Okay, so from here on out, we're gonna be taking deer hair and we're just gonna be doing what we just did. We're gonna be spinning that deer hair on the hook, right? 
And we're just going to fill the head up. I'm making this head pretty big because I want this thing to kind of really float well. Now some of the deer hair that you have, um, it'll spin around the hook better if it's kind of a little bit stiffer. This is kind of soft, but it's what I have. You just want to make sure you always cover with a decent amount, 360 degrees around the hook, right? And as always, you always weave your thread through. We like to push that hair together and we just keep filling in the fly from now. We're gonna have room for one more so I'm stacking it pretty hard you can see we got room for like one more I try not to leave too much of a gap between the hook eye and the material so I'm just trying to push it in you want to get it nice and tight I want to make sure these snake flies really kind of float um, they're gonna be getting tossed around a lot if you're fishing in the surf later in the season so you want to make sure they're buoyant so I like getting them nice and tight you know it all depends if you want them to sink a little bit more you don't need to pack as much material right so it's all about how you want to tie them well, we'll try and be a little neat for the last one here. Leave us enough room to kind of wrap the thread around at the end. One thing I'll tell you, this is a very messy fly. Tying deer hair, wrapping, spinning deer hair, stacking it. It's always going to be messy. We haven't even trimmed the fly yet, but... Um, so maybe get a little duster sweeper or something. Yeah, keep a little duster uh, sweeper or hoover, you know, a little vacuum next to you because man this stuff makes a mess so I'm just gonna tie off here now I'm gonna wrap my material kind of hold it back while I do my whip finishes try to keep the hairs from getting wrapped in there okay so now we're looking pretty good okay so we're gonna trim this now traditionally I used to use scissors and that's still what I use a lot of times you can also use um, a bendable razor here. This one's kind of dull, unfortunately. I've used it a lot. And adjust the the um, the angle that you want to cut the material, right? But this one's kind of dull. We're going to be using scissors. Not everyone has access to these razor blades. So what we're going to do is we're going to trim the head, okay? Right now, this is pretty, uh, pretty much unfishable. This thing would just sit on top of the water like a, a mop, right? But what we're going to do is we're going to anchor, uh, angle our scissors outwards. So we're going to make essentially like a cone shape, almost like a bullet shape head. That's traditionally what the snake fly has been tied like. Hell yeah. All white, great color. So we're going to angle our scissors outwards. And I'm going to start out kind of making it a little blocky. Just doing cuts like on uh, all four sides of the fly. But you don't want to cut too much material off. The head's pretty big on this one. So we're just going to kind of build that bullet shape up. Again, this is a pretty chonky one. Big three-odd hook. Kind of like a mullet, right? A big northeast uh, Atlantic mullet that the stripers like to focus on in October and November out in the surf. 
Now, this is where the fly really gets messy, but you can see we're starting to work on the head now. Right? So that's the thing. You got to be careful when you're cutting these flies because many a times, I can't tell you when I was learning how to do this, um, you cut a little too much off and then essentially you almost feel like you ruined the fly. So be careful. Take your time with it. Don't over trim it. Even to this day after tying hundreds and commercially tying these flies sometimes, or flies like it with spun deer hair, um, sometimes I find myself over trimming them. So take your time, you know. I like to leave a little uncut hair behind all the trim stuff so it's kind of nice and bushy. You know, it's all up to you what you want to do. I think we are going to trim a little bit more off. Now what you can also do is, if I want to get some of this stuff off the back, you can also come from the back end here. But again, try and angle the scissors outwards. If you angle the scissors in, you might cut too much of that material off. I want to leave a little bit of that uncut hair, but I also kind of want to tighten it up just a little bit. Especially by the hook point, I don't want too much of that hair blocking the hook point. I want to make it nice and easy for that fish to get that hook right in the corner of the mouth. As you try to trim the belly side, maybe just a tad shorter so that it swims properly as well. You're going to have to fine tune them. You're going to have to work on it. But you can see here, we got a nice bullet shaped head, kind of cone shape. You know, you can always go around and just fine tune, you know, just trim it. Depends if you're a perfectionist or not. At this point, the fly is ready to fish, but. Sometimes I like to take my time and just lightly just try and make sure it's even, you know? That looks pretty good. That's the Lou Tabry snake fly based off the Angus fly before that. And one of our favorite surf flies. So late November or October when the stripers are in the surf and a lot of the Albies have passed. They're already heading down south to North Carolina, like Harker's Island. We'll fish in the surf, you know, either in the afternoon or early in the morning when there's mullet and herring and all sorts of bait fish in the surf. And, you know, sometimes a lot of schoolies maybe get something over 30 inches, but it's just fun to kind of catch maybe your last couple bass for the season. So one of my favorite flies for fishing the surf, the snake fly. Hopefully you guys maybe learned a thing or two about spinning deer hair. Or maybe now you're inspired to tie a couple of these for the box for the late fall. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed it. As always, tight lines this season. Maybe we'll see you out there. And uh, we'll see you next time on the next fly tying tutorial.